today for part two of our two-part Attract and Convert New Patients webinar series. My name is Sarah Passero, and I'm here with AIS Media founder and CEO Thomas Harpointner, who will be presenting this exciting webinar titled Social Media for Medical Marketers. We love receiving your feedback, so we'll ask you to complete a quick survey at the end of our presentation. If you're on Twitter, you can join the conversation using the hashtag AISMediaEDU. Anyone who tweets us will get a special mention. We're keeping the hashtag in the footer of the presentation. Finally, we'll be wrapping up with a special offer for our webinar attendees. For those of you just becoming familiar with AIS Media, we're headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, and specialize in performance-driven digital marketing for high-growth companies. If you're in the Atlanta area, you're always welcome to visit our office. We focus on providing digital marketing performance amplified, all the while attracting, engaging, and ultimately converting. Our capabilities include digital, market, digital marketing strategy, user experience design, lead generation and online sales programs, digital marketing, including SEO, PPC, email, and conversion rate optimization. Our work has been recognized, garnered dozens of awards, including the Best in Class Interactive Media Award for Responsive Web Design. Our insights and methodologies, such as what we're about to share with you today, has been featured on the press and news, including Fox Business, CNBC, Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, The Today Show, and many others. We've worked with hundreds of clients ranging from leading companies, top brands, to Fortune 500 corporations. We're also very grateful that many attend our webinars and refer us to new clients. And with that, here's your presenter, Thomas Harpointer. Well, thank you, Sarah, and good morning uh, to everybody. Uh, this is a very exciting uh, topic for us. Um, it's, of course, the second part in our two-part series. First, we focused on search marketing. Um, and social media marketing is, of course, becoming increasingly important and effective for healthcare organizations. Um, you know, of course, the big question is, you know, how to effectively use it, and um, you know, how to, you know, what to, what to expect from your social media marketing efforts. You know, as, a, as part of our uh, entire uh, digital marketing model, um, and if you attended our, our first session, um, you've uh, already become familiar with this particular illustration, but we thought uh, we'd share this again, you know, just for those who are just joining us, um, to illustrate the, uh, you know, the, uh, the importance of social media marketing as part of the ultimate, uh, you know, the ultimate digital marketing model where, you know, content, of course, uh, feeds all digital channels. Those digital channels drive traffic back to a website. Um, with the right marketing automation and CRM system in place, um, that same content is used to continue to nurture those leads. And then ultimately, of course, we uh, measure the performance and um, re report on that on a regular basis. So we, we use this internally as a model and also to help guide many of our clients in developing their overall digital strategy. You know, as we can see on the left, social media is an important channel. Um, however, what has changed over the last couple of years is the uh, is, is the importance of social media as it relates to search marketing because the two lines are becoming increasingly blurred. Um, you know, many, many patients today discover uh, content and um, information through social media. Then, of course, to get more information on that, uh, to get more information, of course, then use search. So, so social media is not a very effective tool to search, but it's a great tool to discover um, and come across content you wouldn't normally. Um, however, search uh, still is a primary tool for uh, getting more information about the information uh, patients are already interested in, and of course to find a medical practice or a practitioner and directions and phone numbers and so forth. Um, so it is, you know, it is important to consider it is a channel, uh, but that channel works uh, hand in hand with the others. Uh, for today. Um, you know what we're going to explore, and what I'm excited about diving into is the big shift in medical, you know, marketing, um, you know, as it relates to social media. And uh, what we've done in our presentation today is we've actually uh, included several client case studies, work that we've done with real clients, 
Um, and we, we highlighted two different ones and, and for, uh, you know, just to keep things confidential, we've uh, blurred out the names of these organizations, but one is a uh, large healthcare organization, publicly traded company, and the other is a, is a regional um, center, an aesthetic center, just to demonstrate how both types of organizations are using and leveraging social media to not just create brand awareness, but also to drive um, uh, demand for their services, patient engagement, and actually drive, um, you know, drive revenue growth. Um, we've created a, uh, an illustration outlining the, uh, you know, the, the evolution of digital marketing and marketing in general. But before we do, I'd like you all to just take a moment and participate in this online um, poll. Uh, we have three of these polls incorporated in our presentation today. Uh, to make our, um, you know, to make our uh, seminar a little bit more interactive, and when you when you answer the poll, you'll actually see the results of how your other how, how other peers have, um, you know, how they are answering the poll questions as we're right in the middle of it. So that might uh, help you, um, you know, help you find out exactly where you stand. Okay, so while Sarah prepares the poll question, um, this illustration we created about a month ago, and we thought it might be useful just to give you a, you know, give you kind of a perspective of how marketing in general has evolved, you know, from the 1990s all the way down to 2016. Um, we'll get back to that in a moment, but uh, right now we'll go ahead and answer, uh, we'll inject that poll question, and it should appear on your screen. Right about now? Yep. There we go. You guys should see it. Um, how are you currently managing your social media? Just give you a couple more seconds. Almost everyone's voted. A couple more um, answers still coming in. Great. It, Everyone's, everyone's participating today. That's fantastic for a Wednesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. How are we, how I'll do be we look? sharing the results with you. 70% internal resources, 13% both internal and outside agency, 9% outside agency, and 9% are not sure. Okay. So, yeah, consider how, uh, how your peers answered to you. Um, it looks like the overwhelming majority are managing it internally right now, so that's good to know. Um, that, of course, doesn't go without challenges, right? And uh, we'll explore what those challenges are, and, and, uh, and I think we'll give you some um, you know, tools and tactics that you can actually put to use right after you get off the phone with us today. So, you know, back to the, to the marketing evolution. Um, yeah, we'll make this entire presentation available on SlideShare, and we'll create a recorded version which also includes my voice um, in the in video format on our blog. So don't worry so much about you know screen captures and and scrambling to take notes. You'll be able to review this again later. Um, but you know so you know the main purpose for uh, behind creating this illustration is simply to demonstrate how you know consumer and patient behavior has changed. Um, you know today it, it's become a lot more casual in terms of how new potential patients you know, discover uh, and research their ailments, discover practices, make decisions in terms of where to turn to, everything from, you know, buying health insurance to finding a local, uh, local doctor that they feel they can trust. So um, what we're seeing, if you go to the far right of the illustration, 2016 plus, um, you know, we have the internet, internet of things right around the corner, not that that heavily applies to healthcare medical practices, but you know, in essence, means that you know machines are compu uh, communicating with machines to you know help make make more of the decisions and to put valuable content right in front of users. So um, you know, search is changing um, slightly, where uh, notifications are starting to take place of active search. Meaning, if you have patients and potential patients that you're actively engaged with, you know, opportunities exist to push content to them in ways that didn't exist before say through their mobile devices like their tablets and their smartphones. So when there's an alert on a topic that they're interested in, that type of information can be served up directly to them, uh, bypassing the old school uh, you know, email uh, tactic exclusively. 
So you know, we, I think we're all starting to see those alerts come through our smartphones from you know local retailers, from updates being made to Facebook pages. You know, if you're following a if you're following a brand and there was an update, those push notifications or messages, um, you know, are appearing on those devices. So that's becoming um, a a new way to help patients discover what what they're potentially looking for. So you know, hopefully you find you're finding this um, illustration helpful. You know, next. Um, you know, you might wonder, you know, what, how much of a budget, you know, you ought to be allocating to, you know, marketing and, and, and social media in general. Um, you know, so just from a 10,000 foot view, we thought it might be useful just to take a quick look here in terms of how, you know, small uh, organizations and large organizations compare in terms of um, their, you know, budgets being increased. Now, this was in 2014, uh, new information, new data is uh, expected to be out very soon. And this was developed by Google Insight, so it's uh, it, it's it's quite accurate. Um, you know, of course, uh, there's an increase almost across the board everywhere. Um, you know, whether they're small or large organizations, some of them are remaining the same, but there is only about 20% are decreasing their spending um, in marketing. Um, but uh, with the recession behind us, you know, for the most part, uh, we're seeing uh, marketing spend increase across. Um, organizations, small and large. A couple of key stats to take a look at and take into consideration when you're developing your strategy. You know, one is that 59% of adults have looked online for health information in the last year. So, you know, trade, trade publications and, and, and television, radio, obviously still important channels, but, you know, the, the vast majority are now uh, searching for health information online. 39% uh, have used the internet to figure out what medical condition they or, or another may actually have, you know, uh, you know uh, called, you know, the online diagnosers. So internet's becoming um, a, you know, primary go-to vehicle for trying to figure out uh, what might be hurting and what to do about it. Um, you know, fewer are calling their doctors first. And 53% of online diagnosers talked with a clinician about what they found. So, you know, they're taking that information directly to the doctor and asking for feedback. Um, patients aren't so shy anymore. 41% of these online diagnosers had their condition actually confirmed by a clinician, which is fantastic news because it means that the information that's being shared online is becoming more and more accurate, mainly because the uh, doctors and um, uh, industry is, is driving that type of information. So, um, yeah, that's, that's good news because if, if uh, the majority of that information is accurate, then the level of confidence that potential patients have in using these online channels will continue to increase. So, of course, we'll want to stay ahead of that. Um, this, this, is a, um, this, this may not be brand new if you attended the last um, session, but it's worth reviewing that um, various digital channels play different roles in the patient journey. Um, you know, direct is the type of uh, traffic that comes directly to the website. Um, you know, the website still plays a very, very important role in, um, in influencing a, a visitor to actually take action. Display refers to display ads, like those on, you know, online banner ads that we come across. Um, it, it's still an important medium um, to drive awareness. Um, uh, but, you know, as far as conversions go, um, you know, direct traffic to the website still rules. Uh, if we go down a list, you know, email marketing is split about 50-50 or close to in terms of the difference between awareness, consideration, and actually conversion. Um, so if you're using email marketing, it's a great tool to create both awareness and to drive conversions. Um, driving conversions is, a, is, is, a, is especially effective in email marketing if those email campaigns have very specific, time-sensitive, and urgent offers in them. Um, you know, aesthetic centers, plastic surgery centers, LASIK centers, those type of um, services that drive direct response uh, are uh, very effective in using email marketing. Um, paid search, um, interesting that in almost 60% uh, almost of paid search is very effective at driving conversions. Um, you know, patients do perform searches online and lines between what is, um, you know, what is an organic listing and what is a paid listing in Google are becoming more and more blurred. It's not as apparent as it once was um, what a paid ad is and what a free ad is. So um, when many patients search today, 
they'll, uh, they'll, they'll click paid ads just as frequently as they click free ads these days. So paid search is very effective at driving conversions, um, as is organic search, almost neck and neck. Um, now, which takes us to social media, of course, because the big question is, well, where does social media come in in all this? We've all known that social media for a long time was very, very effective at driving brand awareness. It still is, um, you know, creating awareness, consideration, intent. Uh, social media is a, is a very effective discovery platform. Um, however, what's beginning to happen, and um, we'll, we'll, go, we'll do a deeper dive in our case study uh, in a little while, but social media is also becoming extremely effective at driving conversions. This wasn't always the case. Um, and you know, often when we consult the clients with their social media campaigns, they, they may be running their campaigns internally and they were, you know, they were disappointed at the outcome. You know, often we'd ask, well, what is the, you know, how do you measure performance and what are the expectations of social media? You know, if the expectations were driving direct uh, web traffic and instant conversions, if that was the primary measure of success, often disappointment would follow. Um, but if expectations were um, that um, you know, the purpose behind our social media is to drive brand awareness and just drive engagement and increase fans and so forth, well then, those, then the performance is usually you know, very satisfactory. Um, however, just in the last couple of years, social media is, is becoming increasingly effective at driving conversions. And uh, of course, that's good news for everyone who's in social media marketing um, because it's becoming more and more effective at actually driving patient conversions and tracking it right down to revenue. So when we look at organizational goals for the B2C marketers, um, you know, if you're, if you're marketing consumer, to consumers today or if you're in uh, uh, B2B, we'll jump into that in a moment, but um, the primary organizational goals are still customer retention and loyalty, engagement and brand awareness when it comes to social media. Um, you know, upselling, cross-selling, lead nurturing, um, less so. Um, social media, of course, does have a role in nurturing those leads, but because social media is more of a discovery platform um, than it is a conversion platform, uh, re uh, retention, loyalty, engagement, and brand awareness are still the, the, the primary goals for the B2C marketers. Um, you know, on the, on the B2B side, it's, it's slightly, slightly different. Social media key objectives for healthcare marketers um, of course, number one is brand awareness, number two, lead generation, and three, engagement. So, you know, I would, I would ask you to ask yourself what your primary goal is, um, you know, for your social media campaign. And if you're in a 94% that say brand awareness, of course, um, well, then you're, you're in the right place. Uh, lead generation ought to be uh, a, a top priority. However, generating leads directly from social media takes a little bit more of a direct response approach and um, more concise tactics. Um, interesting that 90% of patients do trust information shared by peers on social media. Wow, right? Um, because some of those sources could be very questionable, but social media is very credible to a lot of patients today. And 41 say social media would affect their choice of a specific doctor, hospital, or medical facility. So, you know, there's some, uh, uh, you know, there's an element to this that is, it could be a little bit scary because, uh, because the trust factor is so high. You know, organizations that aren't on top of social media and don't correct, um, you know, a, an outraged patient or a disgruntled, um, you know, a Facebook fan, it can actually cause them a lot of harm. So something to take into consideration is the, the high trust factor that social media has gained among patients today. And you know, as far as uh, healthcare content marketing usage goes, uh, social media is the number one channel for uh, for content marketing. You know, among healthcare professionals today. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll dive into social media strategy. And um, in in the next in this section, what we've actually done is outlined our own strategy in terms of how we approach a social media strategy, and perhaps you can, you can compare that to your own. And of course, in, in the interest of time today, we can't do a, a super deep, deep dive, so this will be a 10,000 foot view in terms of how we tend to approach it. Now, each strategy is going to be a little bit different from organization to organization, whether we're working with a uh, you know, client focusing on uh, consumers or actually uh, industry, the strategy is going to change slightly. Um, before we jump into it, 
Uh, I'm going to let Sarah jump into the next poll question that we have for you. And since you were all so attentive to, uh, on, the, on the last one, I'll ask you again to do the same. Okay, you guys should see that on your screen. What is your biggest challenge when it comes to social media? Okay, votes are coming in. All right, still going, still going. Give it a couple more moments. And um, I'll take, and, and while we wait, first I'd like to, again, thank everybody for showing up today. We've, we've had uh, nearly 100 registrants for our webinar today, and um, we have participants from all over the United States. Uh, we're, of course, in, in Atlanta, but we have clients all over the country, so it's, it's uh, great to see even the West Coast uh, decided to get up early today <laughs> and join us. So uh, kudos to you guys. Okay, I'm going to close this. And you guys should see the results. 36% said content, 32 strategy, 9% distribution, 23 measurement and analytics, and zero have it covered. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's almost neck and neck in terms of uh, content and strategy goes. Um, so that's, that's fantastic because this section is all about strategy. So um, I, I guess we hit the nail on the head there. Um, if we, uh, you know, and we'll have to do a separate session just for, for content, seeing that it's such a, um, you know, such a high challenge. So if you want to be more effective at social media marketing, um, you know, the first step is, of course, to create a document of strategy. Uh, we, d we did a content marketing webinar and other webinars by the way are available on our SlideShare channel and if you visit our blog um, we've recorded many of them and they are available um, for you to view. There's one webinar we, we did particularly on content marketing with, with a, lot of, a lot of great stats in terms of how a documented strategy or you know, uh, departments with a documented strategy outperform departments with a non-documented strategy and just kind of shooting from the hip. It's a fantastic webinar and one of our content marketing strategists um, that, that works with um, you know, Fortune 500 companies helped uh, put that together, M Melanie. So if you haven't seen that webinar, um, you know, please go check that out. I, I think you'll love it. So um, you know, creating a documented strategy is, of course, a little bit easier you know, said than done. So you know, hopefully this will help. The, the way we break out a documented strategy is by um, you know, uh, Really, really eight steps. We've kind of duplicated the numbers here, but uh, step one, you know, define the goals. Uh, step two, content audit. Step three, content development. Step four, social channels. Bit of a typo. Sorry about that. Um, number five should be social calendar. Um, number six should be uh, formatting that content appropriately for various channels. Uh, seven, distribution of that content, and eight is of course uh, measuring the performance. Um, you know, of the entire strategy. So let's let's dive a little bit into this. Um, so first, you know, developing the content strategy, defining your goals. So you know, know you know, know what you're aiming for. You know, if it's to increase brand awareness, great. Um, if there's more of a trust issue, um, you know, focus on it. Engaging potential pa patients is great. Um, you know, promote social sharing. Uh, should be part of that goal, and improving conversion rates also ought to be part of that goal. It's easy to focus on increasing brand awareness because it's it's a little bit harder to measure. We can easily measure it by saying, okay, we got more Facebook fans, or we drove more website traffic. Of course, that ought to be part of the strategy. You know, building brand trust a little bit harder to measure. If you ask yourself, well, um, you know, what's the difference between you know patients and audiences that trust your brand? Uh, versus uh, those who don't. You know, how do they do behave differently? Um, you know, so you know, promoting social sharing go hand in hand with uh, building brand trust because um, we already know that a lot of patients, you know, 90% of patients today, potential patients, do trust social media in general. But you know, do they really trust your brand? So if they're sharing content, if they're engaging with your brand, um, you know, if they're liking your stuff. Um, if they're, you know, asking questions, usually those are really good signs at, um, you know, uh, trust building tactics. Um, improving conversion rates, on the other hand, well, 
it's a little bit more difficult because what, what does it take to drive conversions? You know, if you have, if, if you're the type of organization that offers services, um, you know, aesthetic services like, um, you know, plastic surgery or Botox or LASIK um, or uh, laser hair removal, for instance, the, you know, those type of conversion rates tend to happen very quickly. Someone can literally visit their website and if the offer is right, uh, you can get a conversion. Um, however, if you know you're a larger healthcare organization with um, you know complex you know services and um, uh, where you know where the where the decision process takes you know not just a website visit but actually a consultation from a physician, tracking those conversion rates all the way back to a post can be a little bit more challenging. So. Um, of course, there are ways to do that, and there are better tools available today than there once were. But the first step is a is, is really awareness, you know, of, of defining your goals. If the ultimate measure of success of your social media, you know, by your higher ups, is on, you know, based on conversion rates and increased revenue, it takes a little bit of a different approach than simply saying, "Hey, let's create brand awareness." So defining those goals is key. Um, you know, the first step, uh, the next step for us is, you know, generally a content audit. Um, you know, what type of content already exists today? Now, this is an example of uh, something, you know, of a custom illustration we did for one of our clients, um, you know, not necessarily appropriate for your organization, um, but it would serve as a, as a good potential start tool. So, you know, if we, we, we consider the type of content that exists today that could be shared via social media, um, content takes up all different forms and, you know, formats, you know, even sizes. It's not just about text anymore, obviously. People are very visual, um, which is why Pinterest has become so popular. Um, um, yeah, Instagram, why Facebook has increased the size of pictures being, you know, of, of its uh, you know, picture formats. So if you take, con if you, if you take uh, into consideration all the type of content that exists today at your organization and break it into different categories, it helps to know uh, what you have to work with already. You know, video, articles, um, you know, infographics. Um, I mean, do you do webinars? A, a webinar like this, once it's recorded, is actually great content to be shared via social media. I mean, you could break out your slides into individual posts. You can take the entire webinar, uh, record it as we do as a as a webcast. You know, then share that webcast repeatedly. Um, you know, you know, various white papers. Uh, you know, ebooks, uh, photos. You know, all of those types of uh, content formats should be part of that. Um, you know, the ultimate content strategy. But the first step is to is to do a complete audit. And anytime we work with a new client, it's the first thing that we really do is we audit the content that already exists today, and we and we identify the type of gaps. And not all content is appropriate for every type of organization. It's not to mean that you have to have content or the equal amount of content in each particular area, but it does help to be able to zoom out, you know, from this and, and be able to look at this in, in your conference room on a, on a big screen perhaps and say, hey, here's what we have, here's what we need more of, here's the type of content that our audience really loves, um, and this is what we ought to be investing in. And, you know, when it comes to content development, it also, it also pays to know um, the type of content used for different stages in the patient journey. Um, you know, content like photos and videos and webinars, you know, the really the, the real visual stuff is fantastic at creating awareness. You know, if you think about how patients are engaging social media today, uh, overwhelmingly they're, they're, you know, they're, they're engaging Facebook and other channels on their mobile devices, their tablets, their phones, and because the screens are smaller, they're probably not reading, you know, two, three thousand word articles in depth, but they'll look at pictures and, you know, they might look at a patient testimonial um, you know, other statistics, um, you know, big call-outs, and that's why visual content is extremely effective at the awareness stage. You know, once you're engaging a patient or a potential patient and you've drawn them back from social media, you know, into your website and they're doing a bit of a deeper dive and maybe they're considering a more, you know, complex procedure, um, they have a, uh, you know, they have, they have symptoms that they're concerned about or they have, you know, they have something that requires uh, longer long-term therapy, well then uh, deeper content like uh, guides and newsletters and e-books and, and um, you know, deep data becomes you know, more valuable. And then ultimately in the decision factor, um, not, in, you know, not, not every organization is going to be using calculators perhaps, um, but if it's appropriate to you, then those type of tools 
um, along with um, you know, reports and uh, patient testimonials and case studies, even ratings and reviews come in very handy. But people aren't really looking at reviews right out of the gate if it's not something they're already interested in to begin with. So um, we, we, we use this diagram, and, and a good way to think about this is as, uh, you know, we use this as chips. It's not, it's not fixed. It's, it's custom created for every, every client. And you might use something like this internally where you can decide based on the type of content that you already have in terms of where it ought to appear in your social media and content strategy. And um, you know, if, if you're using white papers, if you're using quizzes, if you're using photos, I hope you're using a lot of photos, um, you know, once, once you have, you've taken that inventory and you've done your content audit, then, then you can sit back and say, hey, um, how, how are we doing with this stuff and what do we need more of? The, the most popular shared content on social media, uh, no surprise, it's pictures. Um, you know, pictures are extremely engaging. You know, again, we've, we've done a, a content marketing webinar on this topic that dives in really, you know, really deep into this. And according to one study, um, found that, you know, pictures are 60,000 times, 60,000 times more engaging than the written word. And that's because the brain processes images 60,000 times better and more efficiently than the written word. So, you know, social media posts without a visual, wow, you know, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, it, you know, you could have the, the best information on the, in the world hidden in some type of an article, um, but if the key takeaway isn't pulled out or illustrated in some way, chances are that uh, the majority of people are just going to browse right over it and miss it. So, um, you know, the next step is to create a social media calendar. And, you know, it's not to say that everything that's posted on social media needs to be scheduled a way out. Um, you know, in fact, you know, at least 20 to 30 percent of all posts or, or post schedules should be kept open, um, you know, simply because there are news events and certain things that you're, want, you're going to want to be able to react to. Um, so, no, you know, we don't schedule everything. However, it does help to have a month, two months, three months um, already planned. You know, if, you're, if you plan on running certain promotional campaigns, they have to have a place in the social media calendar. Um, you know, we want to make sure that there's a good healthy balance between promotional posts and, you know, just good quality content, even some humor. Um, so if you, if you have a great social media calendar and able to sit back and look at it on a screen, um, you know, on a conference room table and say, hey, you know, what does our month look like? You know, what, what does our next quarter look like? Um, you know, it helps to be able to look at it and say, well, um, you know, maybe we're a little bit too heavy on the promotional side. Maybe we need to add, um, you know, some, maybe some testimonials if appropriate, or just some industry news or some health tips, you know, things that, you know, patients, potential patients want, um, you know, good tips that they're willing to share, uh, you know, how to cut belly fat, you know, how to, you know, the, um, you know, top 10 cancer causing, uh, you know, foods or ingredients, you know, stuff like that uh, that, that gets shared anyway um, has its place. Even some motivational content if it's appropriate to your organization. Um, you know, healthy meals, recipes, um, you know, exercise routines. And then, by the way, you know, we have a special, um, you know, if you, if, you, if you stop in today. So, you know, kind of uh, sandwiching in the promotional content with um, good, valuable information is helpful. And a good way to see that, to, to kind of get a sense of how well balanced the social media calendar is, is to create a, a schedule like this. So, you know, if you're already doing it, fantastic. If it's something that you need help with, Sometimes it, it's, it's useful to get an, out, an, uh, an outsider's perspective. Now, as far as formatting your content, um, you know, here's a key. You know, uh, not all these social media channels use the same picture sizes and the same formats. I know, it's a pain. <laughs> um, you know, but frankly, uh, you know, until and if, I, you know, be wonderful if every one of these channels gets on the same page, right, and uses the same picture sizes and formats, but until they do and if they ever do, um, if you really want to engage users, we have to format the content appropriately for each particular channel. You know, Facebook pictures are different sizes than Instagram pictures. Well, now that, you know, Facebook owns Instagram, if you post to Instagram, you can automatically share to Facebook, and thankfully, uh, a square is still a square. It does show up. Um, you know, however, it's, it, it doesn't quite work the same on, uh, you know, LinkedIn. You know, the Twitter photos are a little different, and certainly the cover 
photos or different sizes and resolutions. So those are things to take into consideration when you're creating content because if, if the picture is half cut off um, or if there's text on a photo and it's not legible, well, um, people can't click on what they can't see and it's irritating to folks um, if it looks, you know, if, you're, if your social media channel just looks sloppy. Um, it, it just looks lazy if, you know, if there's one picture, um, a, a panoramic picture, for instance, that's just that's posted everywhere. So, um, you know, taking that one extra step and formatting the content appropriately for each channel does help. So, one thing that we've done, and, and uh, you know, at the end of the, you know, when, you, when you're done with the, the webinar today, well, again, we'll make this available within about one to two business days online. At the end of this presentation, um, at the very end, um, we'll have broken out, we'll give you a, a social media cheat sheet. Literally, uh, you know, every, every one of these little screenshots that you see here will have broken out into an individual slide so you can use it and actually read what's on here so you can see what the actual, the proper dimensions are for a LinkedIn cover photo versus a Facebook cover photo or Twitter cover photo and you know how to go about it. So each one of these is broken out and we're, we're giving those to you for free. We use these internally, we use them with our clients and they've been extremely useful for us and I hope that you'll enjoy them as well. Um, now as far as content distribution goes, um, well you know guess what? Uh, not everyone is tuned into Facebook as frequently as they're tuned into you know LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, um, you know, even Instagram. So when, when you post something on, on Twitter, the lifespan of a tweet is not the same as the same as the lifespan of a post on Facebook. And coincidentally, people don't all tune in at the same time in each of these channels. Now, it, it'd be great to be able to just give you a, a, a generic playbook that says, you know, post this frequently on Instagram versus Facebook and post specifically during this time of day. However, this is a guide and it's a guide only. Um, the, most, uh, the most effective way to know specifically how well, how well you're engaging with your audience is of course to create a custom version of this for your own organization. And the best way to do that is really to closely monitor your audience and monitor what's working and what's not. Um, you, know, posting, you know, posting something uh, you know, on Facebook tends to have a much longer lifespan than Twitter, so you have to post more frequently, but the magic number is really unique to your organization. And the only way to know for sure is to continually analyze and measure and then create your own schedule. Something that, um, you know, something you don't generally get right at first guess, and some of the numbers might actually surprise you. If you haven't looked at, um, you know, if, if you're looking only at engagement in terms of, well, for instance, if you're only considering, um, you know, how a particular post got shared. If you're only looking at the bottom line numbers and you're not considering the time of day that it was posted, you know, was it a Tuesday, a Thursday, was it on weekends, um, then you're really missing the bigger picture. It's important to understand when your audience is most engaged, um, what days of the week and also what times of day. And you may find a 20 to 30 percent lift in engagement and conversions if you happen to post the right content at the right time to the right audience. So it's a bit of a process, but I promise it's worth the effort. So, um, you know, Facebook, for instance, the best time, now again, it's, it's generic, right? It may, this may not 100% apply to you, but there's probably about a 70 to 80% correlation. You know, best time on Facebook, two to 10 times a week. Um, you know, Twitter, five times each day. Does that sound abusive? Well, guess what? The average lifespan of a tweet is only a couple of minutes. So, you know, if you post a tweet, um, you know, three, four, five times and you post it throughout the week, uh, chances are that a large percent of your, of your audience hasn't seen that first tweet anyway. So if you're posting it only once and measuring, you know, measuring shares, it's, you're, you're not getting the complete picture. LinkedIn, Google, and Pinterest is, is a little bit different. Um, but again, this is a, is a guide only. Um, use it as a guide, but do um, use this and compare it to your, you know, your internal numbers. And as far as performance analysis goes, um, you know, we've used a number of tools, um, you know, some external platforms, some internal, or internal tools that we've developed over the years to help our clients, even ourselves. Um, you know, as far as what to measure, you know, the list can go on and on and on. But of course, you know, we all like to measure fan growth. Well, you know, how many more fans do we have today versus a month ago versus a year ago? 
Uh, of course, that's great. Page impressions, impressions by demographic is useful because guess what? Not, not every um, demographic is going to engage with your content you know, the same way. Um, you, know, one of a, you know, one of our clients, a very large uh, uh, healthcare organization here in Atlanta, uh, they have a, one of their divisions uh, focuses on LASIK uh, surgery. And uh, they tested different types of ad copy on social media to, to get a sense um, for, you know, what's more engaging. And uh, one version of the ad was a, a, and I wish I could show it to you today, but, um, you know, we're, we're keeping it confidential. But one version of the ad had smiling females, um, you know, break bright smile, you know, glowing white teeth, very happy outdoor females. Um, and the second version of the ad had guys, uh, you know, both playing golf, both outdoors, both big bright smile. And, uh, you know, they were surprised uh, that the, the female ad got higher engagement than the male ad did, the male models. Um, but what was even more surprising is that women engaged with uh, the female uh, ad also more than the men did. You know, everyone expects that men are, of course, going to click on female ads more than they click on ma men ads. But even women clicked on, on that version of the ad more. So they use social media as a way to measure um, engagement. And then they applied um, those numbers directly to their, to their other forms of advertising, like the website and their email campaigns. So once they realize, well, you know, our audience, you know, do check email, they use social media, they do visit our website, um, and they use the insights that we help them, help them to identify from their social media campaign, applied it to their other advertising uh, channels, and suddenly they saw a lift in email, they saw a lift in conversion rates on their landing page on the website. Um, so it was very, very valuable data. So some of these platforms, I mean, this is, this is a screenshot from just one we use, uh, you know, they can get kind of pricey. And for small organizations, paying $500, $1,000 a month may, may seem like a high, you know, price to pay. And it is, um, you know, you know, of course, uh, you know, with our clients, uh, we, we get agency discounts, so, you know, slight hint here. So, you know, you don't have to pay 1000 a month. But I will say at the end of the day, um, if, if you can increase conversion rates and lift on your, on your ads by 5 10 20%, even just 3%, um, you know, it's a small fee to pay, you know, if you're actually increasing um, appointments and actually increasing revenue. So do take that into consideration. So, so with that, we're going to move to another poll question. I'm going to turn it over to Sarah real quick. All right. And this is our final uh, poll question today. Um, three of three. So one more time. Um, please, everyone, participate. You guys should see this on your screen now. How far along are you in terms of developing a documented social media strategy? So it's already coming in. You guys voted fast this time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Everyone is either on their second cup of coffee right. or they want to get this webinar over with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's close this. And I'm going to share the results with you. 24% well along, 57% just started, and 19 haven't started. Okay. So, um, hey, gr uh, fantastic. And congratulations for showing up today. So hopefully this, uh, this was helpful. And, you know, any feedback that you can get us at the end of the webinar, uh, we have a survey that will let you complete, and, and, um, and, and we hope that you do. So any feedback you can get us, will be extremely valuable. Um, you know, it's hard for us to know sometimes how deep of a dive to do. We, we don't want to get too detailed for uh, individuals that are pressed for time. But then at the same time, we don't want to go too surface level either. So it will help us to know um, how valuable this information was for you. Um, the most exciting part of the webinar today is this. It always is for me. Um, and, and hopefully, you'll get some value from this as well, because it actually helps show, um, you know, not just work that we've done for some clients, but you know, things that you can actually get to, um, you know, you can apply to your your day-to-day -day business. Um, you know, first thing, the first client we're going to profile is an urgent care clinic. Now, this is a publicly traded company, and uh, they, they've gone on, ac on an acquisition spree, acquiring about one or two new practices um, throughout the country almost every single month. Um, so uh, uh, a high-growth organization. 
You know, their target audience, 25 to 54 year olds, uh, they're predominantly in the southeast, 10 locations when we started with them, uh, predominantly female, um, and uh, you know, that's their audience, and um, they, they specialize in urgent care, right? a very, um, very popular uh, business to be in these days. So what did we do for them? Um, their, their, their strategy consisted primarily of, a, of an old company, LinkedIn, a page and uh, they said, well, you know, as we're acquiring these other practices and these organizations, we need a a structured social media plan um, that's um, rolled out and applied not just internally, but something that we can fold every new organization into. So our action plan consisted of uh, a few things. Number one, uh, we created company pages for Facebook, um, and of course, we went through the entire process we shared earlier, you know, as part of the, the, the social media strategy. Um, but the action plan was creating a Facebook page, Twitter, and a Google account. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we performed a SWOT analysis, you know, looking at their strengths, their weaknesses, and so forth, to really see where they're strong, where they're weak, how they stack up against their competition, um, and where they have the best chance of competing. And because you, not everybody can be, you can't be everything to everybody, right? Um, we built a social media strategy, including Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google pages, posting four to six times per week on every single channel. And urgent care centers created social cards to be placed at the front desk, urging patients to follow them on their newly created channels. So social media strategy expanded into the physical world because we know that the same folks that engage with them on social media are ultimately or should ultimately be the same people that step foot into their practice. Um, so we wanted to remind them. And um, the urgent care centers pr passed out survey cards um, to all the patients. So, you know, some of the examples of the type of posts, um, of course, they all included, you know, pictures. Some of them, uh, yes, admittedly, they were stock photo because stock photos be because they didn't have custom shots for everything. But whenever possible, we uh, we highlighted, you know, some of their physicians. We included pictures of their centers. Uh, we even asked them to include pictures of happy patients that came into the center if they if they got sign off. Now you know healthcare is a little trickier, right? Um, so it, it takes um, it takes a little creativity to get good pictures and to get the release for those pictures. But these were actual examples, you know, posts that were made. Um, and the outcome was within only 45 days of us launching the social media campaign after the strategy was done. So once the campaign launched, 2% of all new patients, uh, according to the survey cards that they handed out, said they came from social media. Um, now 2%, now if you think about it, that may or may not sound like a large number to you. But remember, social media, not too long ago, was considered a primary channel for just brand awareness. But in this particular case, I mean, we're six weeks in, uh, not a very long time, and you know, frankly, uh, they remember they, they only had a LinkedIn company page. They had no Facebook presence whatsoever, so it's not as if they had tens of thousands of you know of, of fans and followers. Uh, they only had a few thousand at that point. So within 45 days, uh, two percent of these you know new patients came directly you know from their social media campaign to them was absolutely fantastic, because you know these these aren't just new patients. Uh, but they're also repeat, they're also repeat patients, and and that translated directly into revenue. And as far as um, you know, what they invested in the campaign versus what they what what, what they got in return, they, they they said the ROI was absolutely fantastic. So uh, that was great to see. So w you know, with that, uh, you know, w remember in the very beginning we asked, or you know, I suggested that you know you have to be able to track the effectiveness of social media all the way down to conversions. And um, here's something that you could also do. Um, you know, patients coming into your practice are probably already filling out paperwork anyway, right? They're, they're spending 10, 15 minutes in the process. Uh, it doesn't take too much to add an additional question or to put a survey card in and, or, you know, ask them to follow you on Facebook if they do step in. But ask them, you know, how did you find out about this procedure today or, or what prompted you to come in? Um, you know, try to figure out what percentage of your patients today are actually coming from social media. Um, is it one or two percent? It might might actually be higher for you, and um, you know if the patient says I found you through Facebook, well that's that's a quantifiable number that you can account for and take to your you know take to your bosses. Um, the second type of center 
Uh, now this, this is a small uh, regional organization. Uh, they target individuals 30 to 60 years of age, 79% are female, it's an aesthetic center, and um, they specialize in laser hair removal, smart lipo, uh, Botox, et cetera. We've, you know, we've, you've seen centers like this. And uh, when they first engaged with us, now, you know, they, uh, they're actually a very successful organization. They run several billboard ads. They've done direct mail. They do email marketing, um, good website. They do all of the above. So, you know, they're, they're really on top of um, their game. But so when they engaged us, they simply said, well, um, you know, we don't need you to rescue us. Uh, you know, we're, we're not dying here. Um, just help us improve the performance um, from things we're already doing anyway. So we went about our, the, the process in a very similar fashion, performed our audit to help them develop a, a, a documented strategy. Um, we then created a new social media content strategy to increase brand awareness and, and site traffic, um, specifically for the highest value services. We asked, look, if, if your phone rings right now, if, you're, if your phone were to ring, um, who do you hope is on the other line? What is the, what is the, what is the one service that you would love to sell a lot more of, um, you know, what's the type of thing that um, you want your traffic, um, you know, to, to come from? So we, we focused on the highest value services first, and then um, created a social strategy around it in terms of uh, the type of content that got posted and the type of messaging that was created. The um, you know, we we also helped them put a better performance uh, analysis and reporting system in place to help better measure the success of their social media marketing. And here's what, um, you know, here's what their posting calendar looked like. Facebook and Twitter, four to six times per week on Facebook, uh, a minimum of six times per week on Twitter. Um, uh, properly formatted images was a big deal um, because, you know, surprisingly, the images weren't all properly formatted and, of course, people can't click on what they can't read. Um, you know, all posts, you know, making sure that they actually have linked back to the company website, that was a, that was a big deal um, because, uh, you know, if there's not a simple link for people to click on, which takes them back directly to the offer that was promoted on Facebook, it just takes too much work. It causes too much friction and people are busy, um, they're distracted, and uh, they're, they're probably not going to take that extra step. And, um, and have a high variety of, of, of content, not just promotional content. So we, uh, we adjusted the, um, you know, the, the, the content strategy accordingly. Uh, Pinterest, because such a high percentage of their audience are female, and, and coincidentally, that's also Pinterest's audience, uh, you know, we, we helped um, optimize the performance of their Pinterest, making sure that all, uh, all company blogs and content um, you know, for, from the website are posted to the boards, uh, uh, repinning at least five times a day, follow five people each week, and create new, uh, one new board every month, um, and making sure that there's an individual board for each service that was being offered. Uh, because if you're offering five or ten services, and they're all kind of, uh, you know, if it's a smorgasbord of offers, um, it, 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 it reduces relevancy, it increases friction, and um, you know the confused and frustrated mind doesn't make a decision. So you know creating individual boards for individual specialties uh, then helps create content that's not just promotional but also educational, informative, and the type of content that people love to share. Um, and that helped increase uh, conversion rates even further. So uh, you know here are some examples or, or some examples um, you know various you know posts and and, and what they might. You know, actually look like uh, the prickly history of hair removal, for instance. Uh, you know, l little, little funny, um, but uh, people loved it. Signing up for email, uh, coincidentally, is good content. You know, cross pollinating different channels across different channels, encouraging um, you know followers to also subscribe to email, is a smart thing to do. Coincidentally, if you're doing email marketing, it's also a great place to promote your, your Pinterest account, your Twitter account, your, you know, even a, a Facebook follow request. Uh, contests and sweepstakes are, or you know, just promotional offers are a good way to do that, to say, hey, you know, follow us on Facebook if you haven't already, and you know, we'll give away a, 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 um, you know, a, a free guide or a, a coupon or some type of a discount every day or every week, and you'd be surprised how receptive you know, patients are to those types of incentives. And um, 
here's the uh, here's the outcome for the aesthetic center uh, a 443% increase in audience engagement in the first 90 days uh, by taking this approach. So, yeah, having a, a strategy, having a document, it, and then um, executing on these tactics. So, you know, this isn't just a five or 10% increase; it's a 443% increase. And remember, you know, I mentioned earlier that this is an established organization that has been in business well over a decade which runs billboard ads, um, does print campaigns, direct mail campaigns, has a good website, um, because to see a 443% lift in something when you know, very little is happening is one thing, but to, 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 uh, to make that happen for a very established organization that's already doing well um, is a pretty big achievement. Imagine if you were able to deliver these types of numbers to your boss and say, hey, Here's how our campaign's going, boss, in, in the first 90 days. Um, that's some serious job security, right? Uh, now, as far as website traffic performance goes, over a six-month period, we saw over 21% increase in sessions, or, or new sessions, people visiting the website for the first time, an 84% increase in overall sessions, and 124% increase in new users. So. Uh, that's over a six-month period. Very, very good return on investment for uh, their, their social media campaigns. Um, you know, this client, very excited, and, um, you know, we're very pleased to deliver those type of results. So, you know, as far as a, as, a, as a takeaway goes, one key takeaway is that social media is becoming increasingly effective at lead generation and new patient acquisition. It's not just for feel good anymore. It's not just for brand awareness. It can be directly linked to site traffic, increased conversion rates, and increase in revenue. Um, and social media and search, the lines are becoming increasingly blurred, which is why we did this in a two-part series. So one thing to consider is that 88% of those looking for health information start with search engines, right? Um, that's a fact. But now, you know, as far as social media goes, now if you notice on, uh, you know, if you'll notice on, on, on Google these days, you know, you have ratings and reviews incorporated into not just paid, but also organic search results. Okay, if, if you were at the Atlanta Dental Center, um, I don't know if you're, on, uh, you're with us today, but kudos to you for having a four and a half star rating on Google and showing up so high under Atlanta Dentist Search. Very, very well optimized. Um, you're on the, uh, you're on your A game, um, but you notice the social media activity. You know, as far as the activity on Google Plus and other social media efforts are helping to increase uh, performance right in search engines. So um, you're, you, you know, you're getting the best of both worlds. Now, one thing to take into consideration is that often social media doesn't get the credit, the financial credit it deserves because when site traffic is being evaluated, right, say, say someone searches for Atlanta Dentist, clicks this link, sees the rating and review, figures, hey, you know, 45 good Google reviews, these guys must be good, and uh, then visits the website as a result of this review, uh, search is going to get the credit for that piece of traffic, right? Um, because it's a Google search, and Google Analytics will report how many people you know, click then if, uh, you know, these folks are running a Google AdWord campaign, well then the, the PPC uh, gets credit for this actual, um, you know, visitor to the website. But let's remember, um, that might not be possible if social media didn't do its job, right? If those four and a half stars didn't exist in the first place and the social media content wasn't used to help drive um, these results to the top of Google. So sometimes, you know, social media doesn't get the credit it rightfully deserves, uh, and hopefully this sheds some light on this today, and it, help, it will help you make an argument that, you know, if your social media strategy isn't working, your search marketing is probably broken. And I would say vice versa. You know, if you're not getting the results from, from your search marketing, it's quite possible that your social media marketing is also broken. Um, you know, which is why we, we, we've been offering a free website performance analysis because of April uh, of this year, uh, Google changed its game again. And, um, you know, they said, look, if you have a website that's not mobile friendly, if your content's not mobile friendly, um, we're going to penalize you. And they have 
Um, we won't get into details today because we covered this in our first webinar. Uh, if you didn't have the opportunity to attend, it is online. Um, I invite you to um, visit it because we've done, we did a much deeper dive into this and I think you'll, you'll find value from it. Um, but again, we, we are pleased to offer you this uh, free uh, website performance analysis. It's going to provide insights into just how well you're doing in search, how high you rank, and some of the uh, things that need to be done to fix it. Um, since we've done, uh, we started offering this analysis, uh, we've performed 70 uh, of these uh, site analyses is absolutely free of charge. And, and here's what we have found so far you know, as far as uh, the site analysis scores go. Speed is a pretty big deal. Again, we'll, I won't get into details about this today, uh, but most sites are, are, are doing a pretty good job at, um, at being quick enough. Now that said, uh, it, you know, if your site performs slowly, you know, people on mobile devices have half the patience, you know, and half the bandwidth. So, um, you know, site improving your site speed is a big, is a big key to increasing performance. As far as being mobile friendly, only 53% of the sites that we, we analyzed passed the Google, Google's mobile friendly test. Um, so if you're not sure, or if your site doesn't, um, again, I, you know, I invite you to take advantage of this free analysis. And the average number of technical SEO errors that we found on sites, now these range from small to large websites, were over 2,000. Now this might sound really bad, <laughs> and in some cases it is. Uh, but some of these errors um, can be fixed with the right, you know, with the right help and the right tools that we use here, um, like missing title tags and images that don't have names and uh, and tags and so forth. Um, you know, often when when sites are updated and, and developed, often at haste. Um, you know, some of these are just oversights. Uh, I, I don't want to say that the, 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 the web developer was lazy. We don't we don't say that here. Um, but often they just didn't know to do it. It wasn't part of their statement of work. Or you know you hire a designer who didn't go to marketing school, so he designed it and it looks really pretty, but he, he just forgot um, or didn't simply didn't know how to do this. So that's why we're offering the free site performance analysis. Uh, it's also on our website. If you go to our website at aismedia.com, you shouldn't have to look too hard uh, to find it. Um, but here it is. Um, you can simply call us uh, uh, right now after you get off and you call us at. 751-1043 and say, hey, I'd like to get that site analysis. Can you help us? Um, you can email us at info at AISmedia.com or you can simply go online um, and, and click the link and complete the form. And it only takes us about one to two business days to complete the site analysis. And we'll also give you a free 30-minute consultation to help you make sense of it all so you can report back and actually know what you're talking about and sound pretty smart. So um, to, to wrap up today, uh, some of the key takeaways and hopefully you've gotten many, many more from the webinar today. I'm hoping you did. Um, but the key takeaways that, that, that we hope we, we got across, number one, uh, social media is becoming increasingly effective at driving leads, uh, lead generation and new patient acquisition. I hope you got that today. Um, two, to be more effective at social media marketing, you've got to create a documented strategy. Uh, if it's not documented, if it's not outlined, um, it's, uh, it's most likely underperforming. Um, if you need help doing it, of course we're here to help, um, but the, the, there are books that have been written on the topic as well if you'd like to, you know, if, if you're more into uh, doing it yourself. Three, social media and search marketing now do go hand in hand. Uh, you could also say search marketing and social media go hand in hand because one feeds the other. Um, so if one is underperforming, there's a good chance that the other is underperforming. And uh, more patients are using social media to make healthcare decisions. So if your organization isn't engaging them, there's a really, really good chance that your competitors are. Um, because if you do a search today for just about anything, um, it, very rarely do you do a search on Google uh, where the results come up as zero. There's always a result, right? Um, and more of that social content is being indexed by Google. So you know, wouldn't it be a shame if you, know, you, you have a fantastic organization with a long history of patient satisfaction um, and they, they simply don't know that you exist and you're a magic trick in the dark. Uh, social media is the ultimate discovery tool. Uh, I think of it as a cocktail party. It's not an industry networking event. You know, people go to Facebook not with the intent necessarily to find a good doctor. Um, however, and, and I should note that, you know, the social media content, um, you know, not, not too long ago, um, 
uh, you know, the, uh, Facebook adopted the, a new system called Atlas. We won't, won't get in, into that uh, uh, in detail today, but it simply means that when people search across the internet and they visit a website, uh, and this is a big takeaway, if they visit your website for a particular offer, um, that same offer can follow that customer around the internet um, through retargeted ads. Um, it's been very successful for the organizations that we, we you know, who we helped get that set up. And uh, those, uh, if you've been on Facebook and you thought, well, you know, I, I visited Zappos, uh, I looked at some shoes, and now suddenly these shoe ads or these Mercedes ads are showing up in Facebook. How is that happening? It's eerie, weird. Well, um, that's how um, Atlas works, and that's a great way for you to drive patient engagement. So if they're visiting your, let's say you're offering laser hair removal, they didn't buy, they didn't set an appointment, but they visited your Facebook page later or even somebody else's Facebook page, your own ad can show up on their Facebook screen even if they're on somebody else's Facebook page, like a competitor's. And vice versa, the competitor can do the same thing to you. So it's something to take into consideration. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a the, in the, in the future session. We're out of time today, and I think we kept it to about an hour um, to not monopolize too much of your time, but just a little bit over an hour. I hope it was valuable today. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, we'll make this uh, webinar available on our blog within the next uh, one to two business days.